everyone, and welcome to A Familiar Quest. Uh, previously on the show, things were a bit creepy. They were a little bit rough. Floating severed heads was were coming at Castle Ravenloft. You fought them off one by one. Uh, particularly, Gale struggled, but also succeeded in the end against m several of the severed heads. And you made your way uh, to Barovia to check up on a certain barber known as Tweeny Sod, named by my players, not my, me. <laughs> Placing the blame. Uh, so you moved from Castle Ravenloft, which you've established as your home. And of course, Squiddle being kind of the Lord of Barovia made your way to the city of Barovia and you entered into the barber shop. And the barber shop had one of those typical red and white poles, but was very worse for wear. And clearly a lot of blood bloodletting had been still been done and leeching had been done. And I believe Squiddle and Pest went upstairs and were looking through the floorboards at what work evil work was being done. Meanwhile, Gale and Mugen went downstairs and peeked around the corner of the basement to see Tweeny Sod and an array of severed heads, and most of them inside of cages, gnashing at the bars, uh, speaking to the heads, cutting their hair, remarking how much easier it is to cut hair on a head that has no neck. And at that moment, Gail uh, relieved themselves out of pure horror. And that's where we find ourselves. Gail, what are you doing? Um, honestly, I'm frozen in fear, like, like, absolutely frozen in fear. Um, I think I would like to immediately try to stealth and, uh, what, what would be around me kind of at my height level that I might be able to hide behind or or like are there maybe table legs or something that i could scurry behind since i'm so little there's several barrels okay yeah. okay absolutely i would love to try stealthing over to one okay and go ahead and give me a roll hopefully my little pee puddle on the floor goes unnoticed <laughs> and mugen what are you how are you reacting to this i feel like i'm misremembering i thought i went in to bite somebody last time, but I could be wrong. So let's just say Mugen sees Gail react very badly and wants to protect Gail. And um, Mugen, the room is still outside, right? It or it's like following me, it's around, it's within a mile of me. So I, uh, I quietly say, broom, go, poke. And I want to send, command the broom <laughs> to, fly into the space that this man is in and uh, knock the skull out of his hand. Okay. I forgot One that mile, we gave get... Mugen a broom that flies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Touch it anything. Anything. Okay, perfect. What you, Gail, what did you get on your stealth roll? Uh, not great. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no, it's not no, great. M. Yeah. <laughs> And that's like my one, it's my highest skill. Um, I got an eight and I, I, I think I attribute that to Gail is so scared, like so deeply scared that I, I really don't think he's in his right mind to be stealthy, you know? Oh, what was that? Was something behind the barrels? Uh, what was someone behind the barrel? Someone behind the barrel. <laughs> and at that moment, the broomstick flies out. Go and give me an attack roll with the broomstick. Does it have Wait. an attack roll? <laughs> what? Um, You're no, just trying no. to knock the head out of his <laughs> hands. So that the, the, I'll say that the broomstick just shoots out and whacks right into the skull that he was working on cutting and knocks out of his hands, spilling over some of his drink at the same time. Broom! How many times did I tell you don't do this kind of thing? Wait, I don't have a broom. No, I... Stop. Bad broom. Um, broom bad. 
<laughs> and he's like, wasn't there something in the barrels? I, I whisper another command to have um, the broom knock some things off a shelf. Starts knocking over formaldehyde. formaldehyde. What, what, formaldehyde. How do you say that word? Formaldehyde. <laughs> Just yeah, it starts knocking over bottles and and scissors and all kinds of implements, and it's starting to hit kind of the cages, knocking all of the cages as well, like rattling them over and over again, and it's antagonizing the deaths death heads, these severed heads that are just floating like balloons in these cages. Uh, pest, Squiddle, as you are watching in horror, I assume <laughs> from above, what are you doing? Hey, 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 Pest. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, yes, that was not my voice. Yes, <laughs> Squiddle. <laughs> hey, um, you, you need a throat lozenger? I, 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 I do. I, I got, oh, I it's so few. dry and dusty in here anyway. Uh, here you go. Oh, thanks. Oh, I don't, so, could you it, just, I, I, I don't have hands. Oh, sorry. I, I, okay. Yeah. I got, oh, With their mm, tentacle mm. drops the throat lozenger into Pest now. <clears throat> mm, perfect, thank you. Oh, uh, you sound, you sound better. It, it sounds like there's a situation going on downstairs. Uh, yes, I would imagine so. We should probably go and check it out because I'm feeling really hungry, and I oh. I don't really know for what, but I I want to figure out what's going down, what's going on downstairs so that I can eat something. All right, I yes, I agree. Before we go though, um, I have a little question, and I know it's going to seem strange because I realize that we just made the decision to come here very recently. But could you remind me why we're here? We're in the barbershop because I'm good friends with Tweeny Sod, and oh. uh, I might need the DM's help with this. Are, because are you? I, don't actually, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember why we're here. I, I well, think, oh. You know that a lot of the severed heads, these right. death heads, had terrible haircuts. That's right. We <laughs> assumed there had to be some type of connection between. Got it. These floating severed heads attacking Castle Ravenloft and bad haircuts. And that oh. maybe someone who knows a lot about hair might know. It just came to me. It's it's because <laughs> these floating death heads had <laughs> these horrible man buns and, and I needed to I, I just knew it was the work of Tweety Sod. So here we are. Yes, of course, of course, of course. I you know it was just a little refresher. It feels like it's been weeks and weeks. Um all right. Well, before we go, I mean I, I imagine we don't necessarily want him to see us right away. Does that seem um, correct? Yeah, that's, that's probably fair. All right. I wonder, um, th this person doesn't sound very smart to you, do they? Uh, I mean, well, he seemed to have just been confused about whether or not he owns a broom. So, no. Okay, you stay back. Oh. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to creep my way down the stairs. Okay. And when he's not looking... Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to attack him. Oh, oh my. All right. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, okay. So Squiddle is going to, if, if there's like a, a staircase that I can go down. Yes. Squiddle is going to make her way down there and peer her head, taking care that her tentacles don't fall out from behind her. All right, you start moving, and and you're up there. You're upstairs, Pest, correct? Yeah, for the time being, I'm keeping as best, as good an eye on Squiddle as I can. Uh, okay, you start moving down the stairs. Uh, you've managed to distract Mugen <laughs> <laughs> to great day, uh, to great effect. Uh, twenty 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 sod is just angrily. Uh, you, I, no, you didn't. I didn't bring her down here. I didn't bring you down here at all. I, I kept you upstairs. Why are you up here? You with, why aren't you up there with your friends? You should be up there with all of my with your friends. I got time to tag it as in my heads. It's not nice. Can I see if Gail is trying to go into the room or is Gail trying to leave and escape? That's yes, Gail. What are yeah, you? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Gail has not made any motions to escape currently. Um, Gail is trying to what is how how am I going to phrase this 
Um, can I see anything around me in this room that looks like it might be uh, useful in terms of like, do I see any papers on a table? Anything that... Um, it's a lot of butcher paper. Looking butcher paper. <laughs> okay. Can and I hair. Dead can hair I that's see... just been left. So there's just like just... Imagine you were in a barber shop and they never cleaned. Okay. So you I... now have advantage on stealth checks and that you're further into the room because hair has gone into every corner onto every surface it's just matted it's blonde it's gray it's black just this whole place and it floats in the air it just has attached itself to everything Uh, um can i try to stealth again since i've been behind the barrel for a minute yeah um i'm gonna i'm gonna use my little time behind the barrel gail's gonna put a paw over his heart and he's doing like he's trying to get his his breathing a little more steady uh because he is one panicked little rat baby right now and wow i'm rolling so badly today already (laughs) um that's a 10 oh no okay i I would like to that was with advantage correct oh no i'm so sorry, that was not with advantage. Okay. I'm a noodle and immediately forgot because I never assume that I get good things. Um, oh, wow. Okay, that's a 12. <laughs> well, uh, I, I tend not to use passive perception. And he's like, whoa. Broom, stop. Why don't you answer my commands, Broom? I expressly told you not to ever do that. You're supposed to be taken care of upstairs along with all the other tools um i send the broom back outside the broom goes back outside and eugenio i need pest to make a perception check oh boy okay uh oh well let's not say that out loud okay it's a 23 (laughs) oh it's 23 you notice that all the knives and the broom have become animated upstairs and are creeping up no. behind you as you feel their long shadows <laughs> floating in front of a lantern. <laughs> oh, and they're just floating scissors snipping over and over again. And the broom just starts trying to brush and try to maneuver itself behind you to brush you towards these floating scissors. Oh uh, my goodness. Uh, I let out the tiniest little squeak, uh, not because I'm trying to be quiet, but because I am in fact tiny. And then uh, I think just sort of very instinctually just bleh, and cast Entangle at the broom. Nice. Perfect. Uh, how big is Entangle? It is a 20 foot square. Yes, a 20 foot square. How high is it? Uh, well, it's just grasping weeds and vines sprouting from the ground in a 20 foot uh-huh. square. Okay. Um, I would right. love to catch some of them scissors, but I have a different spell for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, so tell me... It's a strength what... saving throw. Very strong broom. Let's find out. What's the DC? <laughs> uh, good question. 15. It got an 11. The broom Excellent. suddenly gets wrapped up in its complete nightmare as an animated broom. Uh, dirt and, and also vegetation <laughs> just wraps itself around it. Yeah. And it's returning to the place it once came from. <laughs> oh, so yeah. The broom, so the broom is locked up. Okay, great. Uh, those, the, okay. Where are the scissors vis a vis me and the stairs? The stairs you have to go back out. Oh, there were stairs. Okay, so Squiddle is going down a different set of stairs. That their staircase internal is stairs. what I meant. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're running towards there. You will provoke a tax of opportunity. Okay. Okay. I mean, look, <laughs> I can take a lot, but I feel like these things can just snip me in half. Um, so we're gonna... This is just a single target, isn't it? Yep. How many scissors are there? 
plenty. Uh, that was yeah. your action, okay. though. So. Oh, that's right. It was my action. What am I doing? Yeah, I know how to play D&D. It's fine. No, you're uh, fine. So are you using your movement to just run past them? Yeah, I think I am at this point. Uh, I'll, I'll take the... Oh, gods. Yeah, let's do it. I wouldn't oh. just stand there. It's terrifying. <laughs> Could I use the help action to try and grab Pest, or is Pest too far away from me right now? He's too far away. Does a 12 hit you, Pest? It doesn't, actually. You make it past three of the animated scissors. Okay. And they just kind of, like, snip, and they get, like, maybe one of your whiskers at the moment, and you're, (laughs) like, heading down the stairs at this very, this this moment. Squiddle, you get downstairs, and Gail, you're behind. What are you doing, Mugen? It's been a while since you got to do anything. Um... When we started, were, you, were we outside the door? Or like, where am I? I don't really know where I am. <laughs> You're in the basement. So you okay, were I'm, around the corner of the basement. I see. Yeah. So just not visible yet. Um, I uh, I sent the room away. I think, um, can I, did I hear Pest go, ah, upstairs? Was it close enough? Yeah, I'm going to say yes. You, you, you recognize Pest's scream. Hmm. Like most would just think it was a, like a chirping bird or like a grasshopper just like rubbing its legs or a cricket or grasshoppers don't rub their legs, <laughs> so, you know, or like a cicada sound, but that was like pest version of a scream. <laughs> okay. Well, if I heard that person say that there are things upstairs and then I heard Pesco, eh, I think I, <laughs> I think Mugen would put two and two together. Mugen's not very smart, but mm, hey, don't, don't attack my friends. And I rush into the room and I try to bite. <laughs> you try to, to, to bite tw- uh, 20 sod. Yes. Making the timeline correct once again, <laughs> because you were correct to add attack. Uh, go ahead and make an attack roll. Okay, I get to. Um, oh, gosh, not even, not even ready. Okay. Oh, oh, dice, let's go. So this um, is kind of like surprise round for you. And then we'll yeah. roll initiative. Uh, okay, so that is ooh, a four and a 13 uh four and a 13 13 sorry i'm bringing up tweenies sod is it twenty or tweeny i don't know i'm mm-hmm. saying both Pro- i'm probably tweeny right I yeah tweeny I, th- I think i don't have much of a memory but i feel like i remember that same <laughs> it's fine and what was the again attack? Uh, the high, the higher one was thirteen, and the one was four. He's wearing very thick leather, and he has an armor cost of seventeen. Incredible. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so I rush in. I don't. I I'm just snapping at the air. I'm very angry. Don't mm-hmm. hurt my friends upstairs. Um, and I think uh, I will use one of my. Hmm. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, I am going to use an, oops, sorry. Oh my gosh. What's going on? Uh, my, uh, action surge to do this one more time. Okay. Go ahead. We'll straight again. Sorry about that. Okay. That is a 18 to hit and the other one does not hit. Okay. Okay. One D six, four, uh, four plus four is eight, eight points of damage. I did it. Perfect. All right, you stop. You bite into him. Ah, I don't remember owning a dog, especially one I own with two. Did I sew the other head on you? I'm not your dog. Please release my friends from upstairs. I don't have your friends. Turn off your magic things upstairs. Why? Am I still attached to his like leg? Yep. After well, 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 while your mouth is. Oh yeah, that's right. That's why I get two attacks. I keep forgetting. Just, <laughs> um, so one's talking, one's biting. Uh, yeah. And then, um, so I think I just start to try to drag him out of the room. I start to back up. <laughs> why are you taking me? Hey, why are you attacking Castle Ravenloft? Is this the head thing? This is the head thing. Are you upset? About the heads? Yes, they tried to kill us. I, I, did, I sent them to Castle Ravenloft. That's where they're supposed to go. But why, why are they trying have to two heads? Why do you have all these heads in here? They're my friends. My customers. 
So why do you keep them in cages? Oh, I let them out. I think I let them out right now. Because I'm biting him, can he do magic? Because is it concentration? Does he have to roll? <laughs> can I attack or are we wait? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> the, the, the conversation got uncomfortable. It was, yeah. Uh, you can make an attack roll. Go ahead. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, that was a lot. That was terrifying. Let's hope I roll a little better this time. That's a 13. Which is great. Um, I now have two rapiers, though. Okay. So with two weapon fighting, yep. I'm going to use my bonus action to attack with the second one. Okay. Fingers crossed, I get a single good roll today. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. Whoa. Okay. 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 Nobody panic. It's actually going well. And for damage, that is... Uh, uh, 10 plus two because I have the duelist feet 12. Wow. Okay. You just stab her. But where are you stabbing him? I would like to go for, um, you know, that part of the back of your ankle that sometimes sticks out over like your sneakers. Yeah. I think that's, that's Gale height. I think that's probably oh. like his kind of zone when he's, you, you. So um, that's where I'd like to get him. Okay, perfect. Squiddle, what are you doing? And let's go ahead and roll initiative, but Squiddle's going to be uh, up, 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 up first. Okay. So Mugen got an eight. Okay, perfect. Squiddle got a 14. Um, so these death heads that are in the cages... Are they all still alive or are any of them injured in any way? The death heads are all alive and well. Okay. I'm going to cast Thunder Wave, but use Spell Sculpt and try to aim it so that I actually um, knock Tweeny Sod back away from the cages. Okay. Go ahead. And, uh, what's the save? Uh, con 12? Oh, no. It's 15. <gasps> Is it half damage? I think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go and roll yes, your damage and do half. Okay. Uh, so that's four. Okay, so two damage. <laughs> I'm a big, strong squidling. <laughs> All right, you do like, it, everything, but all the glass in the room suddenly explodes around him. He's like, "What? Why? Well, James, why is there a tiny little crawl crawl on the staircase?" And, and then two headed dog buying me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my friend Pest. Uh, <laughs> Gail, it's up to you now. <laughs> I like it's that a, he's the kind of person that narrates everything that happens to him. <laughs> it's like a fun personality quirk. Uh, it's up to me. It is. Oh, I, no, no, no. It's just you're up. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I... Oh, no, it's Mugen. It's Mugen. I'm wrong. Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. Cute. You get a moment not to have to, have to oh, panic. Thank you. Uh, Mugen, it's you. Oh, okay. Mm. I use my non-biting head to just quickly yell, um, uh, uh, Twiddle or Twiddle or what, what, what do we have to ask this guy? He's, I don't, I don't really remember, remember <laughs> either, but, um, I, uh, I don't want him to release any more heads because those were scary. So never mind. And I, uh, try, I, I release and I go to chomp down again and bite him. I'm trying to okay. basically make him fall over. 
Perfect. Um, okay. Oh my gosh. That is, uh, so it's, I have one critical hit uh, and one does not hit. So that is double damage. That's four plus four plus where to go? Four is eight times two is 16. Wow. Okay. Holy crap. Yep. You sink your teeth and take out a chunk. And then my other head yells, sit. This is a very unusual day. I'm about to, to give me persuasion. <laughs> oh, um, can I use intimidation? Because I'm being scared. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it's a little higher stat than me. That's an eight. <laughs> Just to see what happens here. That's a natural 20. I don't think I will sit. In fact, I don't want to make you sit for me. I'll cut both of your heads off. I'll send them out into the ocean. There's no ocean here. I grew up with an ocean, but there's none there. We talk a lot. The mist is like an ocean, but it's in the air. Can someone help me? He's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? And now he's sad? going to take his action. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> I kind of so want to know sorry. where he's from. He grew up by the sea. He's got a backstory now. Got a lot it, of backstory. <laughs> does a 16 hit you, Mugen? It meets. Oh. It what? It meets. It meets. My armor class, yeah. Okay. And he's just using a single, uh, 21 hits. He's using a single blade, but it seems it kind of, it has so much debris still on this switchblade. You know, on the shaving blade, it's not been clean. It's rusted and jagged and bloodied. Uh, and this tiny blade does eight points of damage on the first hit, and then twelve points of damage on the next one. But I'm fine. I'm alive. I'm uh, uh... It's, it's haircut time for you, puppy. It's been long. You should have been groomed a while ago. Mm. Yeah. I used to have a dog. And <laughs> I did we skip you pest? Yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I got you. You're good. Let, let's go ahead and have you go. Great. That was gorgeous, and I'm glad it happened. Um, all right, so. <laughs> quite the scene that Pest is coming down to. How hmm. are those scissors pursuing? Oh yeah, the, you have Great. scissors in hot pursuit. Incredible. <laughs> it's like amazing. Just, just kind of like some of them are floating and some of them are just doing the weird like <laughs> just hopping back and forth on two legs thing. <laughs> some of them never <laughs> learn to fly. Right, right. <laughs> oh, bless. They'll get there. Um, so so I think I'm just going to keep going. I don't, the scissors, I'm not, I don't like this. So I'm going to keep going down the stairs following uh, in the direction that Squiddle went. And you all uh. of you see this very creaky staircase <laughs> and you see like just it because it's a staircase, which is huge compared to Pest. You see like Pest for a moment and then disappear onto a stair. Yeah. And then Pest like for a moment and disappear onto a stair. And you just hear creaking every time. And then you see an army of scissors. <laughs> Just flooding down <laughs> the doorway. Sorcerer's Apprentice ain't got nothing on Familiar Quest. <laughs> what well, uh, other than running? What else other than running? <laughs> um, I mean, running a lot. Um, yeah, you can take the full dash. I action think if you I want gonna, to. And I think I will. Feet. I gotta get down them stairs, so I think I will. I will dash and just make my way into and among my companions. Okay, you can immediately get among your companions as Great. the uh, scissors are struggling on the way down the stairs at this moment, <laughs> and the broom is still uh, still entangled. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah. So, perfect. Squiddle, what are you doing now? Hey, Tweety Sod, and uh, Squiddle is going to levi levitate and lower their goggles. I don't know if you recognize my voice, I know I look like a squid and I'm purple <laughs> and I have tentacles, but you know this voice anywhere. 
Do you not? Are you talking to them in with telepathy or in your your squiddle weird chirping? <laughs> it probably. <laughs> I think gnome squiddlings sound everybody. like cat, like they're meowing. So it probably just sounds like a very angry cat. <laughs> so you just go meow, meow, meow. You're not using your telepathy at all. And you just like rise up. That's <laughs> <laughs> what you see every day. So once, once I realize that Twitty Sod is hearing, <laughs> hearing meek meows out of me, I then use telepathy. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I forgot to turn this thing on. Still getting, still getting used to my new form. Hey. It's Whittle, previous Lord of Barovia. What are you doing? Last time we had a city council, I told you I was going to keep the water source on so you can clean these blades. And you clearly haven't done that. And why are you attacking my friends? Why do you have these death heads? Why are you cutting their hair? What are you doing with them? It's easier to cut someone's head off when they have no neck. What, why, why do you have to cut hair on a thing that has no neck? I, I, do you? Because if you need... Like mannequins or, or butts, we we could find that for you. You don't have to kill these things or or, or create some death head army. Well, that, well, that was the deal. I make them and then I send them away. And they're happy. I wasn't part of this deal. What deal? With who? Only Shadow Man. That's a made up name. No. His man that lives in the shadow. I, I feel like wait. there's a lot of men that live in the shadows. You're going to have to be more specific. I only know the one. But he said, yeah, I would have friends and I would have customers and they would always come back and there would always be food on the table and then he'd send them out. Yeah. He'd send them out to do things. I know what they're doing. Do you know if the Shadow Man lives in Barovia? I don't know if the Shadow Man lives. I'm bleeding from my leg right now. Someone cut the tendon in my right leg. I'm having trouble walking. Sad. Squiddle still has a little scorecard and just kind of like shows it to Gail. 10 out of 10. Was it? I think it was Gail that did that, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess I gotta be killing all you tiny little pet people. No, you, you, uh, no, I don't think so. Um, do I have an action right now? Is it my turn? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, you've been talking. Uh, I know, I've been talking a long time. <laughs> you, you talked very quickly for a bonus action. What are you doing for an action? Okay. I don't know if this is going to work, but I would like to attempt to grapple Tweeny Sod with my tentacles. Okay, that's a strength thing. A DC seven intelligence saving throw, or be stunned. Oh, until the you grapple are trying ends. to. You're trying to like what? The, what is it called? Mind tickle? Nope, not trying to do that. I'm trying to. The intelligence use my bit. tentacles to stun Tweeny Sod. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was specifically called like mind to tickle I think, or something. No. That requires your target to be stunned. Okay, but this is an innate ability, correct? Mm-hmm. On the yeah, it's, an, it's a natural attack. Okay. So I have to roll a hit. Ooh, natural 20. Okay. So your tentacle hits and it's a natural 20. Yeah. Okay. What's the saving throw? Well, it says intelligence seven, so that's very confusing. Oh, intelligence is the, uh, so they don't get stunned. Okay. Uh, it's a one. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I crit damage eight. All right, you crit damage eight. Tweeny sod drops to the ground and that's it for my turn 
stunned. Uh, oh. We are out of combat. The death heads were not released. We're and they are all combat? mashing at the cages. Oh, no, we're not. You got some scissors on the way. Oh, darn it. <laughs> yep. So uh, 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 we are back on Mugen. What you doing? Um, I was just thinking about my broom stats and how I don't have any. But uh, <laughs> Mugen is very injured. Uh, Mugen's kind of like red in patches all over uh, her golden fur and is, is whimpering a little because she got kind of beat up just now. Um, but uh, I see the scissors kind of going after uh, Pest. And how far away are they from me? Oh, uh, they're going to close the distance pretty soon. You can rush towards them or, I mean, they're, they're about 10 feet away at this point. Okay. Um, I'd like to rush towards them and catch them in my mouth. <laughs> it's that is that. horrifying. I don't like anything <laughs> about that. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Run towards scissors. Run towards scissors. <laughs> um, okay. So I just rolled two attacks because there's going to be, there's probably more than one scissors yeah. happening. Um, that is a, uh, 18, 19, 20, 20, 21 to hit. And then a 16 to hit. Perfect. Okay. I'm uh, running multiple encounters at the same time. So no worries. Uh, that is, uh, one of them gets nine damage and the other one gets eight. Okay. They are very damaged. Those two first two. As you bite into scissors with your mouth, hey. mouths. That's how that works. Yep. Uh, yeah. I guess I would assume that I, I don't just like bite down. I'm kind of like doing that thing where yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah, snap yeah, its yeah. neck not, and messing up yeah, the scissors. Yeah, we're not going too, uh, too super horror. <laughs> not that we've not already gone there. And All right, perfect. Mouth is fine. That's it. All of this is fine. That brings us to Pest. Um, gods, they're still coming, these. Uh, um, hello, Squiddle. Uh, how long is he going to stay like that? DM? <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? It, 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 they're just stunned, I guess, until, hold on, let me double no, check. No, there's a save. Oh, they're is it every kind round? Isn't no. This ability is wild. <laughs> so you use your tentacles until the grapple ends, which can't happen because he's stunned. <laughs> I mean, I guess if he had allies to get him out of it, but that's wild. oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so this is one of those things that save or die. Uh, uh, apparently, as long as your tentacles are on him, he's not going to wake up. It is a DC seven. They got a one. <laughs> so it's kind of squidlings are kind of this horrible thing of like, yeah, they're not a threat until you have a bad day. Uh, right, until they are. Oof. And then you're dead. <laughs> it's wild. Okay. Um, then I am going to uh just call Ooh, thanks, Mugen. Uh and run uh over towards in fact I think I'm gonna can I get up on uh uh Tweeny? Can I cr climb up onto him? Yeah. Ideally, I would love to sort of finish like on his nose, like reared up with my teeth, sort of looking down upon him and then just sort of tell Squiddle like, if you, you know, whenever you're ready, we'll try and make this good. Because we do, we don't want, I mean, like I, we could kill it. We, we need information from him though, right? Like we don't want to, I'm just checking, just holding this horrifying position above him. Well, we know that there's a shadow person. Ah. Uh -huh. Or a shadow man. Uh huh. Shadow, uh, shadow man. Tweeny side doesn't really know where they live, but we know yeah. that they are what is causing this. So huh. I, I personally think we have all the information we need from Tweeny ah. side. Unless. This might be gauche to ask, but um, that doesn't actually answer whether or not we need to get rid of him part. Like, do you want to, is he, should we keep him? Like, should we go or do we need to finish this? Do you know what I mean? Um, I think we should finish this. I, oh. I will note that you are feeling unusually hungry now that your tentacle is attached to a human. And Squiddle goes on to say, I don't like the waste food. <laughs> uh, great, yes, absolutely heard. 
I've made a terrible mistake. Please wait for me to get off this man's head before you have your dinner. <laughs> so a Squiddle is just kind of like grappling Tweeny Sod and telling <laughs> Tweeny Sod all about their day, their tenure in Castle Ravenloft. Amazing. Uh, just because the only other creature they've gotten to talk to in the last hundred years is Pest, and more recently Mugen and Gale. So, <laughs> all right, you're, you're a great right. listener. I love Pest, it. Are, are you doing anything against yeah, the scissors? So, in that case, I will turn back towards the scissors, and from my perch on on Tweenie's nose, I will uh, fire an ice knife at a central-ish scissor because I got then you. Everything around it will have to make a Dex save. Okay. Um, it is a fifteen to hit the scissor with the knife itself. Hits. Okay, um, so that pair of scissors and then every other pair of scissors within five feet should make a, I just said it, dexterity saving throw. And what's Brain the DC? Is, That's uh, a natural 15. 20. Okay, well, they, I don't think they take any cold damage in that case. Uh, do, 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 must explode five feet, take, yeah. And I rolled a two on my damage. So all in all, this took a very long time for very little. Uh, but it's fine. Uh, so the one that I did manage to hit with the knife takes two damage. Two of them are severely damaged. Like, they're oh, barely good. limping now, and the screw <laughs> has kind of, like, fallen out. Oh, yeah. um, that brings us to, to Gale. What are you doing? Uh, how high up are these scissors? They're about your height. Like, they're heading down the stairs. But they're okay. not on... Yeah, they're, they're starting to get to the floor. Why? Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I would like actually be within range to hit yeah them. yeah absolutely and just to clarify how many are there uh a lot i would say about seven a lot okay um gail is going to rage okay i'm Perfect. gonna rage and then because i keep forgetting to do this i'm going to use my wild surge when i do Oh, oh, wow. Okay, perfect. It's my first time using it in the campaign because I keep forgetting that it exists. Um, okay, I rolled a three, which says an intangible spirit, which looks like a flump or a pixie, my choice, appears within five feet of one creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you. At the end of the current turn, the spirit explodes, and each creature within five feet of it must succeed on a deck saving throw or take 1d6 force damage. Until my rage ends, I can use this effect again on each of my turns as a bonus action. Okay, so this is going to happen at the end of this turn, so you still have a, an attack. And it says it appears within five feet of a creature of my choice. Yeah. Um... I'd like it to appear just because it, it'll affect all creatures within five feet of it. I have so much cap fur on my face. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I'd like to put it in a sort of central area so it'll affect as many of them as possible. Okay. Um, but in doing so, are any of my friends within that range? No. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Um, and then I would like to use my attack then to try to hit i'm gonna guess the ones that are closest to me the ones that are towards the foot of the stairs okay perfect okay do i make your attack rolls i'm trying oh my gosh a 12. yeah 12 misses do you have only the one attack roll? Um, I have, I have the one attack roll, and you then... used your bonus action, right? To rage, so you don't get to use dueling. I don't get to do my two weapon fighting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's it for me, I think. So your flump explodes, though, right? Yeah. Okay. So what what's the DC on this? Is there one? Um. Yes. So it is. Uh, oh, it actually just says it must succeed on a deck saving throw or take 1d6 force damage. Okay. So. And how does this thing explode for you? Oh, wow, that's a fail. Uh, how is just one target? Um, 
each creature within five feet of the spirit must do that. Yikes. Okay. Go ahead and tell me how much damage. Um. So I just want to make sure because I've never done this before. Uh, it's one d six force damage, and mm -hmm. that's for each of them, correct? That's for each of them, yeah. But I only do, I only do, I only do the one. one roll. Cool. Just making sure that I only did the one. Um, oh, that's a six. Oh God. Oh, but yeah, I think that's it. I think uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay, so a bunch of so two of them just explode immediately, and you see the other, all the other scissors get split in half by this exploding flump, and they are now just a single blade, all hopping down. Mugen, what you doing? So when you say they're a single blade, you mean like they they got their little middle part fell apart, as a whole bunch of single blades running around, or do you mean like you came one like? They uh they broke. No, they they didn't become a worse situation. They didn't okay. become a worse situation at all. So let let me let, yeah let me clarify there. Um, it's not a worse situation. They're at half damage. They're at half health. Is my way of describing that for you. Oh, okay. uh, I forgot that they want to take their turn though. Um, okay. So I apologize. I'll go right ahead. <laughs> and they're gonna go for you, Gail. I uh, assume a five misses. Sixteen. Yeah, that hit. All right. Gail, you take four points of damage. What kind of damage is it? It is piercing. <gasps> so I only take two because I'm raging. Okay, perfect. Ooh, 22 hits. Wait. Wait, it hits me again? Yeah. And you <laughs> take three points of damage. Oh. But so you're having it. Uh, okay. And I round misses. up, so that's two, right? I run down or up? Uh, let's say round down for you. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> and I assume a six misses. Mercifully, yes. And another one's going for you with a 20 total, not, 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 uh, not a natural one, though. And you take three points of piercing damage again. Okay, so one. All right. And then 19 hits. And two points of damage. So There's you're just like fighting a... off all of these blades. There's a right lot now. of them. And we are now on Mugen. Okay. I'll go back <laughs> to biting. Uh so I try to bite two different ones. Um, oh, that's a 14 to hit and a um 19, 20, 20, 22 to hit. Both those hit. Yay. Okay, Damn. so that is one of them gets three plus four is seven, and one of them gets 10 damage. So seven and 10. Both gone. <laughs> you just Yay. tear them to pieces. Incredible. And then use my bonus action to uh, heal myself a little bit because I'm having a hard time. <laughs> uh, second wind. Okay, that's it for me. All right, Squill, we're, you're up. What are you doing? I am going to use Extract Brain. Okay, so you are a elithid squiddle, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, now I'm saying it, squiddling. Elithid squiddle, I like it. Monk um, of incapacity, so... a creature grappled by the squiddling. It's a, 20, a plus 27 to hit. Wait, no, 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 no. If I have advantage to hit, and if it takes them down to zero hit points, I get to extract their brain. I don't know what their hit points are at right now. Okay, go and roll. Um, so that's 10 for the first one. Come on! 14, because I'm at a negative one. Does a 14 hit? Okay. It's interesting because they are grappled, though. Yeah. Well, that's the description for extract brain. If the target is stunned, squiddling has advantage on attack rolls. It doesn't mean you automatically get to extract the brain. You, got you do have skull. to get them down. You do got to take them down to zero hit points. Yeah, um, oddly Pretty enough, good. none of those hit. Darn. 
Squirtle just so... caresses his head with her tentacle. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. What were the attack rolls? He's not wearing a helmet, though. Uh, it bothers me and... that this is unrealistic. In that <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I do. Uh, 14 was the higher one. Yeah, well, without the armor, he has less than 14. So he's he doesn't have a helmet on. Uh, go ahead and roll 5d10 for me. I'm not going to argue with that. He's just so prone. <laughs> All right, that's that is a twenty-three. What does it sound like when you suck this person's brains out? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, a sound that I personally hate. It sounds like someone drinking a peanut butter smoothie through a very large straw. You just hear this. <laughs> and it's those two little arms protruding out of squiddle's face that no one knows what they're used for i think that's what this is used for yeah and every once in a while you meet you like it, it every once in a while it's a little bit like you're trying to suck, suck up a, a tapioca ball um <laughs> no. Yeah, I was going to ask if there was you. a little pop at the end or something. <laughs> oh, like that reason. It's brain boba. <laughs> brain boba? <laughs> That's the name of this episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you've emptied the skull. Hmm. I feel good. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, it's been far... I'm not at all horrified by what I just witnessed, because over the course of 100 years, I've seen it lots and lots of times, and it wasn't at all disgusting. Um, I'm very happy that you've finally gotten some lunch. It's been days. I was starving. I was I was starting to lose my energy. Um, all, all I'm, I'm sorry you all had to see that. <laughs> all the anime <laughs> scissors it. are running now. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh they were, like, like, trying to hop up the stairs very ineffectively. <laughs> uh, I I will chase them because that is, I am wanting to chase a thing that's running away. Um, but also before oh, I do that, goodness. I just yell over, did it taste like a good soup? <laughs> it tasted like the best soup. It's good, good soup. soup. <laughs> well, that's soup. And then I chase them up the stairs and like stomp them down. Under the okay, you're stomping them. Uh, uh, Gail, go ahead and roll another one of your flumps that explodes. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um... <laughs> I'm I'm still new to this, so I want to make sure. What's the DC? The DC. You know, it doesn't say. And since I normally don't do anything like this, where do I get my DC from? It just says succeed on a deck saving throw. I would have to look at your character sheet. I I believe, if I may. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think all of your stuff is con based, so it's going to be eight plus your proficiency modifier, which is two right. plus your con modifier. Okay, so nine. <laughs> that doesn't feel right. Uh, well. <laughs> I mean, eight plus two, ten. My con modifier is negative one. <laughs> That's what uh. I thought. <laughs> so it, if that, I mean, I'm a tiny no, no. rat. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're no, no, constitution valid. would I have? <laughs> valid, valid, valid. <laughs> yeah, two of them just explode, and, and they never thought this is how they were going to die. They didn't really think about how they were going to die as animated scissors, but two of them get struck by the flump and explode at the top of the stairs falling to just useless, useless pieces. Mugen, you are on a tear. I've not seen you do a bad roll, so you are just like chomping the rest of them left and right, just biting scissors in half, not getting cut at all. And everything is at peace, except for the, the upsetting chattering of several death heads. All of which drop in their cages as the life force leaves Tweeny Sod. Oh, I thought I thought he said the shadow person man person was in charge of the heads. I didn't know he was making them alive with his haircuts. Is that what's happening? Yeah. It, it, that's kind of weird. You're right because I thought that th I thought it was the shadow man too, but Tweeny Sod's dead and the death heads are, are dead. Is Tweeny Sod Sod? <laughs> Is Tweeny Soth the Shadow I Man like also? Tweeny Soth. Soth? <laughs> Tweeny Soth is... 
pretty metal. A Cthulian horror is what Tweety Soth is. You see, <laughs> and the, fl- the the flickering lantern light, Tweety Soth's shadow elongate mm-hmm. and start moving around the room, reaching towards one of the locks on the Death Heads no. cage. And that's where we'll leave it. We'll be right back, everyone, after a brief break. I'm sure everything's going to be fine.
back, everyone. And uh, so you do find yourselves after the recently relieved of their brain, Tweeny Sod, uh, having been eaten by Squiddle, his shadow detaches from his body and starts reaching for the cages to open up one of the doors to all the death heads still in their prison. What is everyone doing? I mean, I, I guess I'm going to try the same trick that worked last time. Although, if Pest had more than half a second to think about it, I don't know that we would do this. But I think I'm going to try and entangle the shadow. Okay. Which is what a wild catch? sentence, but oh, well, entangle. <laughs> attack the darkness. I, attack, I want to attack the darkness. Yeah, I'm going to cast <laughs> entangle at the area where the shadow is. I, don't, I think as soon as Pest does it, he's like... And what does Entangle do? That was a choice. Um, e grasping weeds and vines sprout from the ground, 20 foot square. Uh, da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Creature in the area when you cast the spell must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained by the entangling plants until the spell ends. And how much dam damage does it do? No damage, just holds them, just holds them restrained. All these vines grow all around the shadow and it just passes through them. Yeah. I'd best like, yep, that makes absolute sense. I really could have taken just a second and thought about that. Gail, you see this shadow as well, creeping towards the the, uh, the death head cage. What are you doing? Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, are the cages... And even the shadow has a little divot in the back of its head. Are, do the cages appear to be, like, physically locked or magically locked? They're physically locked. Okay. And you said that the shadow is headed towards them. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, I am just, I'm a stabby stab kind of rat. I'm not I, equipped I, I to help you. magically. Um. Ooh, oh gosh. Is there anything about... You haven't left combat, though, so you still have whatever weird flump magic you got going on. <laughs> oh, we're still technically in combat. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I would love, then... Uh, yeah, and I can summon another spirit for each turn. So I'd like to put it by that, by the shadow. Okay. Um, and then, is there anything above the uh, cages, like any shelving or, or anything? Or do they kind of go floor to ceiling? Yeah, there's some shelving. What might be on top of those shelves? Just various liquids and stuff like that. Okay. And how far away am I from that? You're pretty far. You're down there. You're a rat. <laughs> so. Okay. And so, like, if I were to use my action and my bonus action to scurry up there. You could use your full action to scurry up there. Okay. But then your bonus action will be to shoot off wherever flump energy is going on. Right? You have to use your um, bonus action to activate that? Yes, it is a bonus action. Okay. So the action of getting up there would only cover... I wouldn't be able to do anything once I'm up there. Yeah. You okay. wouldn't be able to do the flump thing. You could still do something else. And I can't figure out what that would be, because that would be a bonus action. So, yeah. Okay, so I can do movement for my action, and then bonus action is the flump thing. Yeah. Okay, um, instead of doing that movement then, I'd like to keep the flump thing as my, uh, as my bonus action. And I'm, uh, I really don't know if this, I, oh gosh, I don't think that this would work. I'm gonna try to throw something 
to try and knock one of the bottles down. Okay. Above where the shadow is. Okay. I'm just hoping there's something in one of those bottles that is magical and might do something, you know? <laughs> I got that you. It's All not, right. It's not just like Barber cleaning. Just give me, give me a standard stuff. attack roll. Okay. Um. Uh, am I doing like an unarmed strike one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fingers crossed, everyone. So, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use my boon of luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my boon of luck. To so hit a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I am. Um, okay. To, I'm going to use a D10 um, and add it. I have so little. I'm just, I'm just trying to. to and I know you do it. You're, you're doing your best. I'm okay. So that adds an eight. So that's a. Uh, 11. Yeah, you got an eleven. So you smack into one of the bottles and it it, it breaks, but it just just kind of seems to uh, irritate <laughs> one of the death heads as it pours into its eyes, and it's just like blinking, like. <laughs> And it's just like shaking because it irritatingly enough can't rub its eyes. <sighs> okay. Um, I, I'm going to end my little turn then with my flump exploding. Okay. And what's the save on that? It's, what is it? Nine? Oh, that's just, that's a natural 20. Are you, oh, you're doing it on the shadow? Yeah. Oof. Is there half damage? Nope. Yeah, I got a natural twenty. I'm yeah. so sorry. That's okay. All right, uh, Mugen, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> Mugen jumps on top of the cage that the shadow is trying to get, and I keep okay. the lock shut with my mouth. You bite like, down on the okay. Yes, so it cannot be unlocked. What do I roll? <laughs> That can be your action. You're just biting down on it, so you can't unlock it. Like it's gonna, it's gonna come at you for sure. Uh, All right, Squiddle, what are you doing? I solved it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast detect magic. Okay, uh, you cast detect magic. There's nothing magical in this room other than what's being carried by all of you. Even what's in the jars. Yeah, nothing's magical in there. All right. Well, I guess I don't have to concentrate on that. So that's that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I figured yeah, I'd give it a you, shot. You you detect the running away uh scissors that have been making their way upstairs. <laughs> Squiddle is gonna lower their head in shame and peer over at Gail. <laughs> good she didn't see me. Oh. It, or he didn't see me. <laughs> Mugen, what's your armor class? Oh, I don't feel like that's really important. <laughs> <laughs> it's 16. Wow. Mrs. Shadow rakes you for a second and just like passes its arm through you. You feel the coldness of it, but nothing happens. Why'd the and, darkness try to touch me? And that's its turn. So we're oh, back cool. up. Let's just say we're back up to Pest. <laughs> I, we're so bad at this. Hello, friends. <laughs> Should we go? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is probably a good time to go. I, I don't I don't know what Tweety Sod is right now. And I know that he's probably pretty pissed because I just ate his brain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it seems like perhaps this shadow might be relevant, but also like it's going to kill us. So... Regroup at the castle? Okay. My other, my other head that's not biting down just, just replies, we can't, we can't kill the shadow because that's probably, he's going to just send more oh. heads to the castle. Yeah, you're not wrong. Ooh. Hmm. All right, Mugen, I can't disappoint you. It's so, 
it makes me so sad, which is a strange what if, feeling. What if we take one of these death heads as a hostage? <laughs> what? So uh, back to the We've, castle. We're not gonna hurt it. Just, <laughs> just, we well, don't a whole say bunch of we're not going to hurt it. Now they know. Didn't we kill a whole bunch in the castle already, though? <laughs> All the death heads. There's like 20 no. of them. We're just like, gonna... sorry. Yeah, we killed so many. <laughs> we're and we'll undead. Get more. Were... No, what they what they mean to say is that there were like a lot of things they that had heads attached to them. <laughs> I've killed uh, before, and I'll do it again. Whew. Terrifying. Uh. Gods. All right, all right, all right, we're going to kill. Um, all right. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna stand on my little back and open my maw and summon down a, a moonbeam onto the, onto the shadow. Tell me about moonbeam. Well, it's not great coming out of pest. It's sort of like this <laughs> one... <laughs> it's sort of this, like, weird spiral of like green and blue energy that like just goes straight up and then lancing down comes this pure white beam of light um on the shadows next turn it will make a dc 15 con save or take some damage um <laughs> and pest says well if this doesn't work i'm really i'm out of ideas and spell slots And that's just, radiant damage? It is radiant damage, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Perfect. I, and I think that's it for now, because that doesn't actually strike until the, the target's turn, so. Gail? What you doing? <laughs> I don't think this is gonna work. I'm... Uh... If I have something that I can only use by touch, how does touching a shadow work? Is that possible? Um, you don't know. Okay. Is there a role I can make to see if um that's something that I would have like learned at any point since this was an Yeah, ability? go give me like an Arcana check. Okay. I wasn't born with this ability. I feel like Gail would have looked into it a little bit, you know? Um, that's a 13. Yeah, typically something magical has to be used to hit a shadow. Or they're very resistant. Like, shadows... Shadowy creatures seem to be very resistant to damage, in general. Okay. And how many heads are there in these... So many heads. Yeah. Like so, so many. Like if they got out, it would that it would be a bad time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gail is going to um yell out. Oh gosh, poor little Gail. This is so not his forte. Um. I'm going to I'm going to try to do inflict wounds on the shadowy thing. Okay? I uh, just to see what happens. And how are you doing inflict wounds? I'm 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 trying to put a little paw on it anyway. I'm going to just try and see if I can um if if Touching the area where the shadow lands somehow connects with it. And you are a level four barbarian? Yeah. But you have inflict wounds? Oh yeah, because I have um same same reason why I have wild surge, I believe. Uh as a part of Oh no. Actually, oh, it's randomly determined, yeah, when you rage, right? It was no no no. This was from um when we did character creation and we got to pick those. Oh, dark. gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that was my baby. 
Okay, go ahead and try making an attack roll. Fingers crossed. That's a seven to hit. Yeah, I'm sorry, you miss. Uh, yeah. Squiddle. <laughs> I know. And what you got? I'm, I'm gonna use my bonus action for my flump spell. Okay, go ahead and explode the, the flump. Yeah. It gets a 16. Okay. 16, 17, yeah. Okay. All the explosion right. explosion looks cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like what you did with the flump. That was pretty cool. Squiddle, what are you doing? You'll get them next time. I don't... <laughs> Oh, we're very no. prepared. To deal <laughs> with this Never shadow. been this stymied by a shadow, and it's amazing. There's two things I can do. Talk to it. <laughs> I could try talking to it. I don't know, dude. Well, do whatever you're going to do. Just remember, it's about to get moonbeamed when it's on its turn. Yeah. Okay. What you gonna do? No, I. Mm, I just need its brain. I don't think it's going to talk to me. I am I am going to cast Thunder Wave <laughs> and use Spell Sculpt. Um, All I right, what's the DC? Think, I don't think I'm going to try and save the Death Heads. <laughs> oh, God. They have been, like, Thunder Waved so, so many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I will so account a, for that. It, it's a con 12. It's a, they got 15. Darn it. Shadow got 15. Darn it. What about the death heads? Yeah, that's going to get gross. <laughs> <laughs> Several of the heads explode. <laughs> oh, so I don't even Inside have to the roll cages. for damage. <laughs> just, keep, just open your beak and get some dessert. <laughs> oh, oh it, this is... Oh, it's like a it's, This is like a It's squidly. a gamey. It's no, a no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. This, this is turned. This is turned. <laughs> All right, so you cast Thunder Wave. Yeah, I cast Thunder Wave, and I'm going to get myself some brain boba, and then I'm going to check on the shadowy figure. All right, and Mugen, what you doing? You still holding tight on the... My, my plan wasn't super good. It does the, the head that was in my... Cage should it explode on me? Uh, yeah, it exploded. Cool, oh but... no, I'm so uh, sorry, Moog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I don't need to keep that close anymore. Uh, 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 I could do some prestigitation next. Oh, next this round. is for the whole cage. Like, there's a whole bunch of them. It's not individual cages. Oh. Yeah. Gross. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Well, I guess uh, I don't know what else to do, but um, and I jump. <laughs> I want to jump down. Oh, is the shadow still touching? Body, oh yeah, it's waiting it... for your head not to be there. What? Oh no no, I meant is the shadow still touching the um the dead uh tweeny tw tweeny sod? <laughs> no, it's so torn itself sorry. free. It's okay, I just thought there was some Peter Pan shit happening, but that's not it. Um, I <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh instead turned to the shadow and um, I I try to stab it. I don't know, whatever. Okay. <laughs> I use the little. I have a little uh. Thing on my head, a little, right. like a little crown with a little spike, and that's my dagger. So okay, dagger. perfect. Uh, let's see, that is a twenty to hit. Yeah. Um, wow. And then the damage is seven piercing damage. It takes seven <laughs> points of damage. Uh, well, it takes three points of damage because it's uh -oh. resistant to any type. Oh, I, oh, it can be hurt with with things, with touching things. Okay, just <laughs> everyone else, just so you know. I'm doing great over here. <laughs> is, it the, <laughs> is it the servant's turn, Eugenio, or is it uh, that the moonbeam goes off? Let me double check that it's the start. But, uh, yes, start of its turn. All right. Well, go ahead and what's the save? Uh, DC 15 con save. Oh, okay. I got an 11. 
Okay. Is this AOE? Well, Am I gonna get hurt? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a. Uh, it's well. I have it pushed to the side because I think it's just like a five foot radius. So. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, I'm glad you said you failed because my damage was garbage. So it takes five radiant. Uh. But the moonbeam does stay. It still exists. So hopefully we'll get another chance at it if this isn't the end. It burns it completely away. <laughs> oh. Tell tell See, me how I... it happens though. Uh, I think it starts, I think I have it, so I tried to avoid Mugen, right? So if it was sort of reaching for it, then I think I would have brought the moonbeam down, like, somewhere closer to, like, I don't know, the belly area of the shadow, right? And just, like, from there and going outward, uh, the shadow sort of, like, (laughs) it's pretty at first, like, it sort of sparkles as the moon sort of illuminates the shadow, but it being me, eventually those sparkles turn, turn sort of, like, green and sickly uh, as the shadow is burned away. Perfect. Yeah, and it just kind of sizzles away and some of the some of the other death heads get hit by the moonbeam and start crackling and burning and you are out of combat and you are left in this horrible place. And upstairs you hear the clattering of scissors still running away. <laughs> I'm going to press digitate Mugen. Let me get that for you. Sorry about that. Oh. Just like a p- <laughs> giant piece of broken skull just drops off your head. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, uh, uh, so we beat him. I don't Gail feel like we is... solved any mysteries. Well, <laughs> Gail is gonna like without hesitation run as fast as he can and launch himself at Pest and go. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, 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 um, you're very welcome. Oh, oh, Gail, no, it's all right. I mean, we protect each other. It's, it's all right. Um, but you're very welcome. That was really quite horrible. Um, and, uh, well, you know, Squidlet and I have, have been around these parts for a while, but I know it's new and horrible. Um, I would say it gets better, but I don't like to lie to my friends. Um, um, Moogie? Uh, mm. Squiddle, you okay? Oh yeah, I, I feel great. <laughs> Had a good meal. Uh, the fight's over. I'm just gonna get myself a little, little doggy bag. Uh, uh, sorry, to-go bag. And <laughs> have myself some breakfast for tomorrow morning. <laughs> Gail, oh. Gail. That definitely never gets any easier to see. Good to know. Yeah. Um, Moody, I, uh, y- hmm? you want to look for bones? Okay. Uh, and because I heard uh, the, the thing about the snacks, um, as I'm searching through uh, the ground, and I'm sure there's exploded skull bits, I kind of just scoop them into one, one big pile for uh, Squiddle. Yes, I made some like floor soup. You want to bring that home? <laughs> Squiddle is just going to take one of those jars, empty it out, and just scoop the floor soup Ooh. into it. Thank you, Moogan. You can put it. Oh, I call back the broom, um, so that the, the broom comes in, and there's still that like uh, what we said it was a treasure chest hanging from it that uh, Squiddle rides in. Yeah, or you can put it in here. It's oh, actually thanks. been murdering scissors. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, just come back from like an epic broom slash scissor fight, uh, and returns with a basket. Yeah, Squiddle's uh, gonna climb into the treasure chest with the jars of floor soup. I hate floor soup. I hate everything about the term floor <laughs> soup. I do hate Good. that. More for me. I do. <laughs> uh, can I search for clues? I'm not good at it, though. <laughs> I'm not <Okay>. good at <laughs> it. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can You can look around. I invest, I have a plus zero. Seven. <laughs> Why yeah, you, you, you didn't find nothing. <laughs> okay. I, I'll probably scurry off to do the same. Okay, going do a little bit of search. I I would also like to just look around to see if there's any indication of the Shadow Man. Um but I I think uh well anyway, Pest likes to think uh that knowing that getting around is a little, a little more difficult, I'll just hang with Squiddle until the Oh Gail, no. Oh no, floor I soup is scooped. Do- I can't do a single good roll today. I'm I'm so it's sorry, Em. Wild. What is it? I mean, you've had a rough go nothing. for the entire show. Uh, yeah. Pest, do you want to do an investigation check? Yeah, I guess so. I, 
Uh, yeah. Let's see what happens. Why not? We'll go around. Oh, it's a dirty 20. Oh, wow. You find, uh, behind one of the little pieces of wood in the floor, uh, an actual journal. Oh. However, oh. <laughs> it's completely written backwards. Uh, oh. And one side, it's written backwards. So you see these lines of like, where he's talking, he's like, complaining about all his customers. Like, I don't <laughs> They always, they always, they don't tip well, and uh, they always want the same haircut, and the kids are brats. And then, backwards in writing, as if reversed, there's oh. an answer, telling him how he should separate their heads from their necks. Oh, that. As if he's talking to Mister Shadow. Back and forth. Um, this conversation continues over and over and over. In the, in... Uh, can I clarify? Are the letters in reverse order or are the letters backwards? Backwards. Okay, great. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, I think I might have found it's really, I don't, it's good that we ended him, I think. Uh, and I'll... Alert my friends to the journal and what I have found. Um, I don't. I don't know. Is it in the same handwriting? Like, does it look like he was writing both parts? <sighs> oh no. Well, I don't really know. Either the shadow man was was just him, um, in which case problem solved, um, or the shadow man was in him and might have been that one, in which case also problem solved. Um, or we're just wrong about everything, and in fact the problem is still out there, which, uh, you know, I, I sort of wish I, I could discount, but um, <laughs> based on how things have gone so far, I can't. I think we're right about this, but the problem's still out there. It's just a different problem than Tweeny. Mm. Mm. Yes, very good. That was the salute. That was the, the, the version I didn't think of, yes. Well, why did... Mm, Tweeny, who is also the Shadow Man, want to send the skulls to try to kill us in the in the castle. Mm, maybe if we look through the journal, we'll find out. Certainly worth it. I, I mean, what's odd is, and we mentioned this before, but I, I'm not entirely sure that this is necessarily directly related to our familiar problem because the castle was being attacked by undead when we met the two of you, which was long before we found anything out about this issue. So I just, I just sort of don't, I don't know what to think. Um, but yes, we can certainly page through the rest of this journal, see if there's any mention of a motive or, a, or anything at all, really. I think that's a good place to start. Hmm. Anyone else want to give me an investigation check? I'll do one. Sure. Uh, roll higher than seven. God, are you serious? Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> well, t she technically did. She did. That was a curse. I'm sorry. You rolled an eight. Uh, pest. As time goes on, you continue to read through, and uh, -huh. uh there are scraps of paper stuck in this ledger, and some of oh. them look very familiar. Their handwriting. They are writings from your professor. That have been torn of books that he was writing in. This is me and Pest. Ah. Uh. And one is of a drawing that your professor actually made of Castle Ravenloft. And on it, it says, when there is a gap, dark energy fills the gap is drawn to the gap. A space without darkness needs to be filled with darkness. Squiddle. Hey, Pess, you, you okay? What are you reading there? Um, does this mean anything to you? And I don't think I say anything about who wrote it yet, but I will recite the thing about darkness and the void and just say that. D does that mean anything 
to you, to any of you? Well, when we first met, there was that that figure. You know, when when we went through that um, what was it like an amber stone oh, yeah. with, with the crack? We went through that, and that kind of shadowy figure talked to us. Yes, I forgot. And about that. I wonder if if that's something that filled that gap or if they were just a messenger i squirrel kind of wants to go back to check on that room and maybe if that crack is still there go through it again well discuss that amongst yourselves yeah yeah <laughs> um uh, yes, I mean, that certainly seems relevant in light of the, um, well, the indicates the, the writing. Um, I think, um, could we, uh, Mugen, would you, could we, would this fit somewhere on your broom or something? I, I would love to bring all of this back just to, you know, it's our only sort of bit of evidence just to, to keep an eye on it. I just kind of get it with my paws and like toss it in the treasure chest. Okay. Oh, thanks. Does anyone else feel like they need to um, heal their like gaping bloody wounds a little? Oh, bit? oh, Gail, I'm I'm so come come come. Of course, Gail, I'm terribly sorry. Thank and you. like very distractedly, it like does my creepy stab heal. Uh, you know, a few mm -hmm. times probably. Let's see. Uh, first one is 16 hit points back to you. Wow. Bless. I rolled Thank nice you. on a second level. <laughs> yeah. Are you good? That has me just a couple points away from full. Well, we should probably go back and take a, a longer rest. Mm, I feel like everyone's super <laughs> tired. Mm, and I sure can't do anything if we can do another fight. <laughs> <laughs> We sh yeah, right. Uh, yes, yes. We should definitely head back to the castle at this point. Um, we can check the the room downstairs and, and rest and decide what's next. All right. Does everyone make their way back to Castle Ravenloft on the broom? On the broom. <laughs> yes, yeah, Squiddle is in the treasure chest still. Absolutely the side terrifying. Of the broom. <laughs> you shoot out of the barbers, uh, having completed your mission, and you fly back to Castle Ravenloft. Is there anything you do before you decide to 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 like where where do you park the broom by the way? Oh, um, where's the landing pad for the broom? I if if it gets, if it's shaped like a traditional castle with like a big gate and like a courtyard uh, in the main area, then probably there. I think. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, everyone, step on off the old broomy express. Still working on it. I don't know what to call this. Uh, and uh. Um, Squiddle, did you want to check out that room now, or do you think we should take a, a rest first? No, I, I feel like I'm I'm having a little bit of a food coma right now, and I <laughs> I, I kind of want to go to sleep. <laughs> okay. So sorry, I dropped the dice. Uh, Mugen, give me a Constitution saving throw. What? <laughs> 12, 13, 14. Thank you. All right. Um, cool. Everyone's got to take a long rest. I. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. But yes. when when yeah. Squiddle makes their way into the clone room, is the toad person still there? Well, uh, hello, Squiddle. How are you doing? Oh. You seem to I'm... be, uh, tentacles seem to be plump. <laughs> oh, you noticed. I finally ate. I had some brain boba with my friends, and I, I brought some back. You want some? I don't particularly like the taste of brains, but I don't like the particular taste of anything that isn't flies. All right. But I expect if I change my form, that will probably change. You can change your form? Of course I can change my form, can't you? I can just decide to be something else, and then I am something else. I mean, I didn't, I didn't decide to change my form, but I guess I can. I did it once. Oh, sure. Every familiar can change the form. Do 
Did you not know? What? That okay. you can change your form. We're going to put a pin in that. <laughs> right. Well, that seems like a longer conversation for later. The clones yeah. are all kind of four. Some of them awake. Some of them not so awake. Been a bit bored. The, the, the Whittles, some of them are awake? Yeah. Well, they move around a bit. They don't talk much. Did any of their eyes open? They open from on occasion. Squiddle is going to run in or levitate very quickly into the room. <laughs> Look at the, the whittles that do have their eyes open. They kind of just blankly stare back at you. But isn't that how clones normally function? They, they sometimes wake up and then they sometimes do weird things. I don't know because I, I don't think they've ever been fully grown before. And Squiddle is going to kind of move from side to side to see if the eyes follow them. Oh, they follow you everywhere. Hello. <laughs> okay. Glad, glad to see you're all grown up now. All right. I'm going to take a long rest. Um, I'm going to... Uh, what's the Toad person's name again? I'm so sorry. It's Mr. Toad. It's Tommy the Toad. It, I'm saying this Tommy. like you should have known that. <laughs> Tommy Two Toad. Um, has anything happened here besides the, the Whittle's eyes opening since we went? I mean, despite all the clones sad. slowly becoming sentient over a short period of time? No, 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 nothing that I think of being remarkable. Okay, so you, you didn't hear anything from downstairs? From downstairs? Like Avernus? No, we're not that far downstairs. Oh, like, okay. No, no, I haven't heard anything. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Why is the grave? Good night, Tommy. Good night. Mugen, where do you like to go to sleep? I know we talked about this last time. I can't remember. I feel like it was wherever Gail is, I think I'm just nearby. Because I used to just sleep on the floor, and then I believe Squiddle gave me like some blankets and things, and I made like sort mm -hmm. of a little, a little hut situation from just like leavings. Um, so, Gail, where were you staying in the castle? I was staying in like a little planter in the courtyard where uh, I cute. yes, we were in together. the courtyard together. Yeah. Okay. We're in the courtyard. My broom is next to next to me at all and times. <laughs> just hovering. And how do you go to sleep? Um, I close my eyes and I <laughs> think about sticks and how many I could get in a day. And then I think about how many more sticks I could get if I had another head. And I think about sticks and I count them all and then I fall asleep. And then I kind of rest one head on top of the other and curl into like a little C shape and go to sleep that way. Perfect. And uh, how about you, Pest? How do you go to sleep? I don't know that. I do right away. Uh, I usually sleep out in the courtyard. I have a whole little thing out there. But I think when we get back, um, I ask Mugen to drop me in 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 one of the sitting rooms in the castle, like a you know just a small out of the way space with the notebook with the journal. Uh, and I will. <laughs> and I need more rest. So uh, against his will, Pest will eventually fall asleep just like on the book. But just trying so hard to stay awake as long as I can, just like reading anything in the professor's hand over and over and over, trying to figure out why that barber would have had anything of his. Excellent. And Gail, so you, you sleep next to Mugen? I sleep in a planter that's probably like near Mugen, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, a, a little bit separate. And I think Gail would stop off and see, is, is there anything? I don't, I don't know with the way Squiddle and Pest eat, if there would be like food accessible to me, or if that would be a thing that would not be there... available. Yeah. Uh, there's blood pudding, probably. Oh, gross. Leftover blood pudding. Okay. 
there's not a ton of food there's probably like some rations from some adventurers who thought they were going to attack castle ravenloft and didn't even make it that far so you find like you know like oh this thief tried to break into castle ravenloft and didn't quite make it they looked like villainous so maybe it's okay okay <laughs> that they have a carrot or some che- bit of cheese on them but yeah I'm- like they've they've been hit by spiked traps and stuff like that I'm very small. I don't require much. You know, I'm technically tiny. So I'm just going to break off a little bit and kind of like. And then. uh, I don't know what the. uh, What the D&D equivalent of a vibe check is. (laughs) But (laughs) when we get back to the castle. I kind of want to do a vibe check and just make sure we've been gone for a while weird things have been happening and i just kind of maybe maybe even just using gail's nose doing like when gail came in to look for food just doing a little little sniff test as he scurries around to see if there's any fresh scents that are not their groups You smell undeath. Something undead recently was here. Something you have not, you think, smelled before. Maybe it's slightly familiar, like when you first arrived. Do you care? What do you like to collect, by the way? Ooh, um, Gail likes buttons. Okay, so buttons. What else? Shiny things? Um... Not so much shiny things. Gail likes collecting things that can be like repurposed more so than based off of aesthetics. Okay. So he'll find things like if he finds a thimble, that's something that's a goblet to him. You know, like that's very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, probably things that are like sewing equipment because I forget what they're called, but those little spools of thread and stuff, those are very useful to him. Um, he would collect not necessarily shiny stuff but things that would have uses so like if he found a brooch that has like a pin clasp in the back that would be helpful to him because he can dismantle it does that make sense so you're you're admiring your thimble for a moment and it's very shiny you can't see your face warped around all the tiny little holes and you you're 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 visage what you like about the thimble because it's like skinny and then big is you look really buff if it's like, you know, skinny part down and then up. <laughs> so it just makes you look even tougher. But something's wrong as you're like flexing in front of your thimble. What kind of wrong? Oh, Mugen's disappeared. I'd like to sniff for Mugen. And see. Oh, you smell Mugen. Moogie? You hear Gail call for you. What's up, Gail? Can I hear Mugen's response? Oh, yeah. And when you turn away from the thimble, Mugen is there. But there's no reflection. Um, so, (laughs) Moogie. Have you ever wanted to have, like, um, extra powers than what you have right now? Uh, yes. One more ahead. Did you ever think that, um, like, some of the stuff that Squiddle can do is pretty cool, right? Mmm, brain soup was cool. Brain soup was cool. And when Squiddle was Whittle, I bet they were really cool, huh? Uh, maybe. I just still don't really understand any of that. Yeah. Um, something's happening to you, Moogie. And you don't have a reflection. Hmm. Huh. Well, I guess that's okay. I don't really look in mirrors a lot. Is that bad? No, that's, um, that's looking at the glass half full. And I love that attitude on you. But 
I think it's still maybe important to think about why you don't have a reflection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's because we are staying in a place that has magic in it. Oh. Right, but I'm also here, and I can see myself. Oh, so it's just me. Mm. I'm what have I done that you haven't done? Gonna... Does Mugen smell different at all? Oh, yes. What is different about the way Mugen smells? <laughs> <laughs> Some good GM is going to happen here. Cold. <laughs> yeah, Todd, tell what us what a vampire smells thick. like. <laughs> And Mugen hasn't been sweating for some time. Okay, Mugi. You hang tight. I'm just gonna go check um and see what Squiddle thinks. Oh. And Gail's gonna reach a like a tiny little paw out and kinda give a little a little scritch to to Mugen. Um from from that like vantage point of the the planter and i'm gonna scurry off and uh we walked through squiddles area before we'd already oh, yeah. seen it yeah okay so i know where that is so i'm gonna go off in search of squiddle then okay you go off in search of squiddle and luke and you are left alone in the court courtyard hmm i try to i use my Two heads to try to sniff myself. Like, what's different? What? Do I smell or see anything? You do different? smell different to yourself. Hmm. I didn't think I could smell myself. Oh, is it mm, not as stinky as before? That's not good. Is this what clean smells like? Hmm. Hmm. You do notice the thimble. Very shiny. Hmm. I go up to the thimble. You see in the distance a man, very pale and pointy ears and long black hair, wearing very old armor, fanged and glowing red eyes. Oh. And he's I... walking, not behind you, but he keeps walking towards closer to the thimble, closer to you through the reflection. Oh, I pick up the thimble and I walk backwards. And you get closer and closer to him. Hey, and hey. he leans down. Hi. Hello, Mogan. Let's talk Who about killing Squiddle. What? Oh. And putting me back on the throne. <gasps> okay. And that's our game, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This has been a familiar <laughs> quest. Hey, yeah, Henny, what you got going on? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this was great uh thank you so much uh todd that was awesome um thanks for hanging out y'all we appreciate you being here um i'm Epanio. i'm team jazzy Ends. uh i play pest here on monday nights uh where else can you find me uh i am a streamer here on twitch you can find my channel at dm jazzy Hens, uh same handle on twitter um i have a dnt podcast that drops new episodes every wednesday called the last refuge you can check us out uh i am also let's see by the time this airs we will be closing in i believe on the finale of season 12 of rivals of Waterdeep. uh so we are on sunday afternoons 1 p.m eastern 10 a.m pacific uh twitch.tv slash rivals of Waterdeep. and i think that's what i'm doing these days perfect uh uh, uh m are you okay m <laughs> We lost him. I ah uh, um <laughs> okay so hi I'm M Montgomery um I go by the username <laughs> Nega Oryx on Twitch and on all social platforms you can find me at N E G A O R Y X. If you need me this week, please don't because I will <laughs> spend it just staring at a wall thinking about that <laughs> ending. <laughs> <laughs> um I, uh, <laughs> um you can also catch me on Thursdays twitch.tv slash fable scraps uh on a show called Star Trek Adventures Loveless. Uh it's a Star Trek TTRPG. 
It's a lot of fun. It just feels like a fan-made Star Trek TV show. Um, and that's at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 p.m. BST. Um, Megan Kenner. Oh, sorry. You, you have more? I, I, uh, no. what was today's ending? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for having me. Bye. <laughs> oh. Megan? I can't wait to know what Strahd's brain tastes like. Gross. I have killed him once. I won't kill him again. Megan did. Okay. Good. Megan, you're the coolest <laughs> Me person personally. I know. Um, thank you for joining us today, everyone. I am Megan Kendrick, and I play Squiddle, previously Whittle, uh, who, who killed Strahd. Not me personally, as much as I, I wish I was powerful enough for that. I am not a murderous vampire. Um, you can find me here every Monday at 5 p.m. If you want to know more about the history of Whittle, I would recommend checking out Cures of the Plains. We just wrapped up our campaign a couple of months ago. Also, my character Whittle from Heroes of the Plains is also available to play on Idle Champions. And lastly, I have a new podcast uh, episode coming out with Roll for Persuasion. So be sure to check that out shortly. Perfect. And Michelle? Um, I am not sure when this is going to air, so I don't know what I'm allowed to talk about. So oh, just yeah. Find, <laughs> yeah, find me on Twitter at I am Cherry Bunny. I will post everything there. You can also see my website, michellewinbradley.com, uh, is where I post things like the news that's happening in my life. And uh, I just made a new uh, voiceover reel. If you want to listen to me be silly and be little characters, you can do that. It's everywhere, on website, on Twitter, wherever I uh, do my stuff there. That didn't make any sense. Anyway, um, yeah, and I'm on shows and I can't, I can't talk about anything I'm doing right now until I, like, time passes. <laughs> and that's me. And I'm very excited for maybe some PvP next session. I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for watching A Familiar Quest. Thank you for this amazing cast. This is always a joy and we always are uh, definitely breaking new ground in terms of D&D. So I appreciate everyone watching. I appreciate this cast and have a great night. Bye. Thank you everyone. Bye.